What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rovardo, and man, what a loss that was for the New York Giants. How they managed to blow that game and lose in overtime, I don't understand how it was even possible, but they did it. It was impressive the way that they lost that game. I really don't understand what the New York Giants game plan was in the second half. I mean, listen, the Jets are not a good football team. This is a game that the Giants should have won. It was very winnable going into it, and when they had that fourth quarter lead, and squandered it I really don't know what to say but I'll try and find things to say and break this one down for you all go over a few of the good performances that we saw I mean Kayvon Thibodeau had a great performance I thought Wink Martindale did a great job defensively but man this Giants offense continues to be inept I understand we were down to QB3 but even still there's no excuses for only 10 points on the board and losing this game in such pathetic fashion but before I dive into this game recap make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode subscribe to the channel if you are new ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on this putrid game and performance down below in the comment section. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. Without further ado, let's dive into this game, guys. And the first thing that I want to get out of the way is Tyrod Taylor's injury. Now, he went out with the rib injury, uh, and that left the Giants with Tommy DeVito to go in at quarterback and try his best. But, man, he wasn't able to do much in the passing game when the Giants actually let him have an opportunity. And then they just shut him down completely, made him just stand there and hand the ball off to Saquon Barkley. I thought it was a really weird switch in the game plan. I, I didn't mind the fact that the Giants were keeping the ball on the ground and trying to preserve um, Tommy DeVito and just run the offense through Saquon Barkley. That's what you do in that situation. You give it to Saquon Barkley. But when they finally did throw the ball, when they finally did give Tommy DeVito an opportunity to pass the football, they kept having him throw screen passes, one-yard passes, behind-the-line-of-scrimmage passes, and that's where I didn't really understand. You got the guy in the game. You might as well throw the ball and try to win. The Giants were playing to not lose rather than playing to win, and that's where they went wrong. Again, I, I didn't mind the game plan of just feeding Saquon, killing all the clock, but when they got down there with fourth and one and an opportunity to put the game away and they let an injured Graham Gano go out there and kick the field goal, that's where my point of contention lies. That's when the Giants should have given it to Saquon Barkley one more time. You're on fourth and one, or even let Tommy DeVito sneak it, whatever. You don't feel comfortable with that. Wild, wildcat it with Saquon. Do whatever you got to do. But fourth and one, you have an opportunity to put the game to rest. And Brian Dable, you decide to put the field goal unit out there and injured Graham Gano out there. He missed a field goal earlier in the game. That's when the Giants had officially lost that game in my mind. I thought that the game plan was fine. It worked, guys. Like, not throwing the football, it worked because the Giants did march their way down the field. They killed a bunch of clock, milked that clock all the way down to give the Jets very minimal time with the football. But instead of going for it on fourth and one and giving the Jets really bad backed up field position, even if you don't get the fourth and one, um, they will go ahead and kick the field goal. The Jets march down the field, put it into overtime, and of course, win the football game. But that moment right there, that fourth and one call, that the Giants had and chose to kick the field goal, that was bewildering to me. Saquon Barkley should have touched the ball on that play, fell forward for the fourth and one conversion, and the Giants win this football game. But now instead, they're two and six, and the season is, it's lost. So is it draft season for the New York Giants? I want to hear your thoughts on that down below. I think that it is time to start looking ahead to the 2024 NFL Draft if you are a Giants fan. That's just my opinion. Of course, we're still going to continue to cover the New York Giants in this season here on Fireside Giants, but I will say we're going to start taking a little bit of a look towards draft season here and there because it's time, guys. The New York Giants aren't turning the season around. Had they won this game, I would have felt some sort of confidence that they probably could have turned the season around. You know, from going um, going from 1-5 and five to 2-5 and five to 3-5, and five, and then you have the Raiders up next. The Giants had a chance to be 4-5, and five, but after losing this game in such pathetic fashion two and six this season does feel like an absolute lost cause and I'm really not thrilled with the way that Brian Dable has managed the team this season I'm not saying that the Giants should fire Brian Dable if they don't win another game this season they lose every other game I'm still riding with Brian Dable for the future but I just don't think that he's performed too well this year he's made some really tough bad decisions so far this season and that fourth and one call that's one of them but it wasn't all bad for the New York Giants I do want to highlight some players that I thought played well and mainly that would be Kayvon Thibodeau. Three sack performance. He had the breakout game. He heard the the WFAN criticizing him all week on the radio show, or at least on that one show where, you know, things got a little touchy. Giants fans got a little bit upset. Kayvon Thibodeau thanked us Giants fans for backing him up on social media. And then he went out there and gave us a proper thank you with an absolute breakout performance against the New York Jets. Now, I understand 
He was going against Zach Wilson, Makai Becton, a really bad Jets offensive line and Jets offense. But even still, guys, Kayvon Thibodeau with an amazing performance. I thought he played some great football, and I really think that he has been playing great football all year long. This was the marquee breakout performance that really stands out and tells you, yeah, Kayvon Thibodeau is something special, or at least he can be. But I think all season long, he has had a good year. And it was great to see him kind of respond to the criticism, go out there, use that as motivation, and just have a breakout performance for the New York Giants. He has eight and a half sacks in seven games. I believe it is, or in eight games. So he's at a, a sack per game average. Kayvon Thibodeau is having a great year, guys, by all statistical categories and means. Kayvon Thibodeau is having that breakout season, that second season that we were hoping from him. But another thing that I want to mention here, players who played well, Dexter Lawrence, also great um, on the interior defensive line, going up against a fourth string center for the New York Jets at one point. But Dexter Lawrence still balling out. I thought Leonard Williams played good, played well um, also. And Ashawn Robinson with a key stop. Um, in run defense. I thought the whole defensive line was really great. And what I want to talk about is Wink Martindale and the way that this New York Giants team has just been letting him down all season long. I think that Wink Martindale's defense, yeah, the first three weeks of the season were pretty ugly. You're talking about a performance in week three versus the 49ers where this unit missed 16 tackles. But since then, they've only missed 17 going into this game. And also, if you look at these games that they've been playing, the Giants defense has kept this team in it every single week. Think back to that Seattle game. The Giants defense put them in scoring position multiple Multiple times with turnovers and with fourth down stops. They played great football even dating back to then, but the Giants offense unable to score a touchdown in that game. Then you have the Miami game. The Giants defense forced three turnovers against the Miami Dolphins. That's not easy to do, but they still lost that game because the offense did not score a touchdown. Now, this week, once again, the Giants defense forced turnovers and the offense never found a way to capitalize. The special teams didn't even capitalize often enough with two missed field goals from Graham Gano. Again, Graham Gano, why is he still playing if he's clearly too injured to kick the football through the uprights? He's been dealing with an injury all season long. They said he's probably going to have to have knee surgery at the end of the year. Honestly, I think he needs to have it now, and the Giants need to look at their options at the kicker position because Graham Gano, I love him. He's Mr. Automatic. He's one of our most clutch players when he's healthy, but it's very clear and obvious that right now Graham Gano is not healthy and should not be kicking clutch field goals for the New York Giants. That's just my opinion. Listen, this is not the Graham Gano we know, right? We know what Graham Gano is capable of, but we are not seeing what he's capable of because he is missing field goals left and right and really costing the New York Giants some, some points, some crucial points on the scoreboard. This is a game the Giants should have won had he converted those two field goals. The Giants do win this game. Even just that second field goal at the end of the game, he makes that. The Giants are going to win this game, but Man, it's been a tough season for Graham Gano. It's been disappointing to watch. I just think he's injured, and I think that the New York Giants need to do him a solid and get him out of the lineup um, and let him rest up and get that surgery because what he's putting on the football field is really costing his team games. Um, and then another player who's caught, who cost the team the game in this one, that pass interference by Adoree Jackson was egregious. That was an ugly play by Adoree Jackson. I understand the ball was underthrown. But he didn't make any effort to get his head around. He just tackled the intended receiver while the intended receiver was looking back for the football. He just tackled him. So that was ugly. Of course, it sets the New York Jets up for a field goal right there in overtime for the win. And they convert. And it's an easy win. One thing that I will say, Thomas Morstead, he's going to get that PED check this week. New York Jets punter, guy was playing out of his mind. And that was one of the problems for the New York Giants is... He was punting the football well. The Giants were having really bad field, uh, field positioning, and they weren't able to move the football and sustain these long drives because they didn't have a passing game. Tyrod Taylor being out of the lineup crippled this offense. And then Tommy DeVito going into the lineup, listen, he tried his best. He handed the ball off well, but they didn't even let him throw the football downfield. And again, I thought that it was the right game plan to run the ball all the way through the fourth quarter. That was great. But in overtime, that's when you got to start throwing it. And they didn't even let Tommy DeVito throw past the line of scrimmage. I thought that was a mistake, and clearly it ended up being a pretty mistake for this New York Giants team. So credit to Saquon Barkley, though. He touched the ball almost 40 times in this game, was constantly getting the football, and you really do have to take your hat off and say thank you, Saquon Barkley, for all that you did for the New York Giants in this game. They deserve to win. He deserved a win in this game for the way that he carried this Giants offense, but unfortunately... Like I said, this team really blew it and let down some key members of the team. Um, Saquon Barkley being one of them, Kayvon Thibodeau being one of them, and Wink Martindale being the other one, in my opinion. Um, Gunnar Olszewski, I think is how you say his name, did a great job with his first game as a New York Giants punt returner. Actually did force some missed tackles, get some punt return yards. 
I thought that he played a pretty good game in his New York Giants debut. But overall, this is a heartbreaker for New York Giants fans who really wanted to beat the Jets. I know a lot of Giants fans were saying this is the Snoopy Bowl, the MetLife Bowl. We got to beat. This is the battle for New York. We got to beat the Jets. It didn't happen, guys. The Jets are the better football team, in my opinion. Um, I didn't think the Giants were going to win this game, but I do think they should have won this game. And I do think that Brian Dable severely mismanaged the game plan um, at the end of the game, fourth quarter and overtime, and ultimately did lose the game for the Giants and again all my love in the world for Brian Dable respect for him he deserves the coach of the year last year he deserves to remain the head coach no matter what happens this season but just a really really tough outing for him and he's had a few of them so far this season so a disappointing moment for Brian Dable I thought that he found the way to fight keep his team in there and get the win um, and that really would have been a season changing moment for the Giants had they won this game I mean you're talking about beating your cross town rival in the New York Jets um, and getting to three and five on the season, the Giants had a chance here going to Las Vegas to play the Raiders next week to really turn their season around. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen for them now sitting at two and six. Is it ever too late? Can the team always come back? Sure, those things are true. You know, it's never too late. Um, but it, it, it's looking like it's going to be really tough for the Giants to climb themselves out of this hole. Now, one thing that is worth noting, Daniel Jones is expected not to return next week, but the following week, week 10 versus the Dallas Cowboys. Now, do you want to see him return against Micah Parsons and the Cowboys defense? I know a lot of Giants fans are scared about that. But listen, with Tyrod Taylor now injured, I don't know who starts at quarterback next week against the Raiders. I would assume it's probably going to be Tommy DeVito. Um, Tyrod Taylor take it to the hospital with a rib injury. I doubt he's ready to go next week. So we're probably seeing Tommy DeVito unless the Giants go out there, sign some veteran off of free agency. Um, but Daniel Jones will be back soon. We'll see how he performs and again mentioning how this might be draft season for the New York Giants from here on out it's going to be crucial to watch the way that Daniel Jones performs when he's back in this lineup I know that a lot of Giants fans want to see the team draft a quarterback because they're losing so many games and there are some great quarterback prospects this season but with Daniel Jones re-entering the lineup in two weeks he is basically playing to save his job, in my opinion. Um, and so I'm going to be keeping an extremely close eye on Daniel Jones and the way that he performs when he does return to the lineup. Another thing to note, the offensive line, I thought they played pretty poorly today. Pretty good in run blocking because they had to. They were running the ball all game. But in pass protection, I think that's partly why Brian Dable wasn't letting Tommy DeVito throw the ball because he knew that the offensive line was getting beat up. A great pass rush by the New York Jets. They have an excellent front seven um, defensive unit. So it's just a tough matchup for the Giants here again this is a game that they should have won I'm really disappointed that they didn't get the win I don't root for the tank I never do if my team wins great if they lose and they're really bad this season and it helps with their draft position okay that's cool as, as well but I always want to see my my team win football games the New York Giants unable to do that in this one I mean really they were able to do it but they blew it somehow I I can't believe it guys this is just a meltdown of a loss and again I know Wink Martindale, I sung his praises the last drive of the game. That wasn't, he was in a tough position there. Probably shouldn't have called such soft coverage. The, Mar the Jets just marched down the field there. That was silly the way that they were able to get in the field goal range so quickly at the end of the game. So really you look at every level of this team and it was a catastrophe uh, and a meltdown of a loss, but it just all goes back to that fourth and one play in the fourth quarter, in my opinion. Brian Dable choosing to kick the field goal with an injured kicker rather than go for it on fourth and one with Saquon Barkley. I don't agree with that decision. Some of you may disagree with me and say that kicking it was the right thing to do. Gano has to execute, but I don't know. If you're Dable, you know that your kicker's injured and he's been missing field goals. I just think you go for it on fourth and one. You hope for the best. And if you don't convert, at least you only have, um, you, you didn't, you lose maybe what, one to two yards. But when you kick the field goal, you lose like 10 yards because you got to snap the ball backwards. So, I don't know. I just thought it was a mismanagement on Brian Dable's part there. Um, the Giants deserve this win. Many of the players on this team deserve this win. But at the end of the day, another meltdown loss for the New York Giants. And we're staring 2-6 and six and draft season in the face, very unfortunately. But that pretty much wraps this one up. I want to hear your thoughts on this loss down below in the comment section. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. And subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. And make sure to leave us a 5-star review on Apple and Spotify if you're listening over there. But that pretty much wraps it up. Like I said, we'll catch you all in the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants. Thank you.